Oh yeah, guys. Now we're gonna talk about how to extend the range of your electric bike. So stay tuned. Point number one, tires. Tire tread and tire pressure. If you look to this tire, it says 58 PSI. This is the maximum recommended pressure. If you wanna extend the range of your electric bike, you should ride with at least 75% of the recommended maximum pressure. Anything below 75% will decrease your range. I think this bike right now is about 90% of the recommended uh, tire pressure. If you are a heavy rider, your bike's heavy, big hub motor on the back wheel, for example, or is a cargo bike, you always carrying heavy loads, pay attention to the tire pressure. If the tire pressure is too low, you're gonna cause damage to the rim, to the spokes, to the bearings, and can be catastrophic uh, if you pass on a pothole at high speed. Another important thing is the tire tread. You can see this tire is a sleek tire. In my opinion, the best tire for my application is the type of tire that decreases rolling resistance and will further increase the range of your bike. This bike is very fast on the asphalt. And in conditions like rain, snow, or gravel, what I suggest you to do, deflate the tire. I'm gonna get a stick and I will start deflating. This stick's not strong enough. You deflate your tire. Okay, let me check here. Could be a bit more. To increase the footprint of the tire and increase contact of the tire with the soil. So this is a good tip in case you choose a slick tire and you see yourself in an adverse condition. The other important thing to mention about tire pattern is that the wider the tire and the more spread out the tire knobs are, the higher will be the rolling resistance of that tire. It means that tire will consume more energy of your bike battery to, to be pushed you know, forwards. I like this tire very much, man. So as you can see, matching human power with the electric power is something very important. For example, Right now, there's no force on the cranks and the motor is being triggered and going madly, you know, continue accelerating. There's no force whatsoever. So it's very important to realize if your legs are actually pressuring the pedals and producing any force at all to help you move the bike. Don't get confused by spinning pedals with producing power. As you, as you just saw here, there is no force on the pedals and the motor is being triggered. In more sophisticated bikes, they use a torque sensor. So the torque sensor actually measures how much force you are applying and will deliver the power accordingly. The more generic bikes like the Fang, and, and the most conversion kits you're gonna see in the vast majority, I think 75, 80% of the market, they use a cadence sensor, which is exactly what you saw here. The pedals are rotating, but there's no force on the pedals. In that case, the motor is going madly. How can that help you increase the range? For example, if you start applying human force on the pedals through shifting gears and finding which gear is perfect for that moment, for the, the speed you're riding, you probably could ride the bike at a lower level of assistance. So adding human power to the pedals and realizing when the motor, electric motor is accelerating you or when your legs are accelerating the bike makes all the change in how far you can ride your e-bike. So guys, what you are seeing here is the frontal area of my bike. The frontal area is the, the member of the equation, you know, the, one of the incognites of the equation to calculate air resistance. So when you are cycling, if you increase the front frontal area, wider handlebars and more upright chest position on a very tall, wide tires, you know, you're gonna make it harder to go against the wind. You are increasing the frontal area, consequently, you're gonna reduce the range of your electric bike. I commute in the city. 
I don't do trails, I just commute in the city. So I have very narrow handlebars. I can go in between the cars. I use a bike that's 26 inches wheels with slick tires. So it's a very close to the ground bike. And the frame is, is ideal for my size. So I'm inclined forwards, making it very aerodynamic. So if you change the stem, change the handlebars and have a taller bike, you are increasing the frontal area and that decreases the range of your electric bike. Now, we're gonna talk about battery. So on a battery, the bigger the battery is, the lower will be the voltage sag when extracting power. That means the bigger the battery is, will also increase maximum power of your e-bike. And people sometimes talk about only amp hours and amp hours is range. No, amp hours are also maximum power. If you want uh, uh, your battery to last a long time and your range to be decent, buy enough battery for your motor. So sometimes the trip is shortened because you are throttling too much or pedaling too much in a very hard terrain. And even though on the display it shows that you have 40% of battery left, every time you see a very difficult, challenging terrain, the motor is so strong that it sucks all the energy of the battery and then your battery goes to the, for example, voltage cutoff limit. And then your bike, boom, stops. The last thing that you can do to increase the range of your electric bike is to eliminate excess weight. I will give you an example. Years ago, I built this bike and I had some need to carry pannier bags, maybe my drum every weekend, and I installed this rack. Now, uh, because I have the Centaur, you guys know the Centaur, uh, I don't need to, to carry the loads on this bike. I use the Centaur, which does the work way better. So I haven't been using this rack for about one year. What I could do, I could remove this rack. I would eliminate a few kilograms of my bike, would improve the suspension performance, and would give me an extra mileage. Now that you know how to extend the range of your electric bike, I have to go to a workshop. See you next video, see you next time. Leave your like, share, and subscribe, and tell your friends about this new revolution. Welcome to Cyberbikes.